For the fastest, cheapest, and most reliable coins in the market with a no band guaranteed delivery, check out my coin sponsor, MOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Matt Money Shot sniffing out the NCAA cheese. About an hour or two ago, a lot of information dropped from a lot of different outlets, meaning that the non-disclosure agreement terms were probably up from all the people that were invited down to EA Orlando. There wasn't a lot of new leaks or a lot of new information about gameplay just yet. A lot of uh, stuff really that you know most people already knew. I already made a full video about all the leaks from gameplay. I'll have a link in the description as well as on screen at the end of the video if you guys want to check that out. But there was a lot of new information information about dynasty mode which is something i previously reported as being one of the biggest focal points of the developers when it comes to making this game so gameplay was number one obviously but dynasty mode was the mode that they put the most in you know most time into uh which is nice because a lot of people expect ea to really only be interested in selling packs when it comes to mutt or whatever they're going to call uh mutt in uh, college football but that's not really the case so in this uh article that i'm gonna read you guys which is an article that was published by the new york times uh it's basically going to tell you everything that we're allowed to know at this point about dynasty mode and there's a lot of really good information now like i said i already talked about gameplay quite a bit in a previous video but there is expected gameplay to come out more information to come out tomorrow and i do plan on making a video about that so if you guys want to see more information if you guys want me to keep you up to date about this information as always please make sure to be a subscriber hit like button let me know in the comment section other than that let's go let's get right into the video now as far as dynasty mode if you guys never played dynasty mode it's basically cfm for college football uh the idea is you typically want to pick a low level school think something in one of the the lesser conferences and just try to build them into a powerhouse that's, that was what always was the fun about it i typically like being a uh, a small school in a big conference i used to be like, like kentucky and stuff like that teams aren't typically good in football or at least they weren't back when I played, uh, you know, NCAA 14 and stuff like that. I like being a team that faced really good competition was kind of my point. I didn't like to be, you know, somebody in the MAC or the WAC or something like that. I'm not even sure if they're called that anymore. But ultimately, we're going to get into the basics here. It says players can coach up to 30 seasons, which is basically the same thing as Madden, which I'm guessing, you know, there's, there's going to be a few things here that look like copy and paste from Madden, even though you're hearing a lot of stuff saying it's nothing like Madden. The next one's the same. It says dynasties can have up to 32 users, which considering there's 134 teams, it's kind of weird. Once again, 30 two teams is the same amount that you have in Madden so for people that have those fears that this game is going to be just like Madden some of these things might confirm that a little bit but I really think they're just using a lot of the same I and mean, we all know they're using the same engine they're probably using a lot of the same parameters as well now it does say something that is in Madden that's not going to be in NCAA is online dynasty mode will not have cross play which is something that I mentioned already in a previous video uh, that we already knew about but um, you know I'm sure they're eventually good planning to put that into the game I think that ultimately that particular version that they have having Madden right now does have a lot of bugs and they're still working it out so I think they want to you know get that perfect before they put it in the NCAA because at the moment NCAA is like the crown jewel of EA as far as football games considering it's the first game that they made specifically on uh, next gen consoles there's no port over from the from the old gen it's something they built from the ground up on next gen which is really cool and I think it's going to make it one of the better football games that they put out now it says custom conferences are back which is something that um, you know is where in the old games where you can basically move schools around to put up to 20 teams in a conference which makes sense considering that there's going to be 32 user leagues you would imagine you want to put the majority of them into one conference but still that doesn't quite add up that's kind of like you know if you have 32 teams it'd be nice to have you know maybe two conferences of 16 i'm not really sure but it's something that's going to be a little bit interesting to see how people work that out because obviously if you're going to be in one of these type of um you know dynasty modes online you're going to want to play users all the time you're not going to, want to play a bunch of computers so it's going to be interesting to see how that works out it says they can't create new conferences from scratch but they can build like the old Pac-12 backup if they like or, you know, do whatever you want. You can basically create whatever you want. Like I said, if it was up to me, if I'm in an online dynasty mode, I might want to make an, a, a uh, you know, just make a 20 team um, conference and just have like a 20, you know, have my own 20 user dynasty mode or something like that. Maybe I'll do that when the game comes out. If you guys don't know, I do have a, a CFM with users with uh, subscribers right now. And I do plan on doing something like that when NCAA comes around. A uh, little bit of a bummer, though, that it's only because I, I play on Xbox. I'm only going to play with Xbox guys. But. But it is, you know, it is what it is at the end of the day. Now, one of the bigger questions that I get a lot in my comment section is if you can start off as an offensive coordinator or a defensive coordinator. And yes, you can. You can begin as a head coach in a small school or the coordinator, which is pretty cool. Uh, there are no real coaches in the game, which is something that a lot of people knew that Deion Sanders wasn't going to be in the game. 
Um, but I guess it really comes down. I mean, I would imagine they just don't want to pay all the extra money when it comes to uh, the names and faces of these, you know, big time head coaches. Lane Kiffin probably said that he'd like to give his, his likeness for free to be in the game, but um, you know, I, I just imagine they don't want to. They don't want to go through the process of putting all the coaches' faces in the game, which is kind of sad. But it's something that they might be doing in the future, uh, depending on, like I said, whether they want to pony up the dough for. Um, you know, because these college coaches make a, a ton of money, tens of millions of dollars a year. I can only imagine what they would, um, you know, what they would charge. Now, it also says here that as a dynasty coach, you're going to have a uh, backstory, uh, which is motivator, recruiter, or tactician. Uh, they, I think they did that in previous Maddens as well, uh, giving yourself those type of things give you like a specific boost in a specific area. Like a recruiter probably gets much better recruitments, uh, like boost in that area, has people more willing to come to their team. Motivator, maybe you build your players up quicker, you know, stuff like that. It says, um, utilizing 11 skill trees for coaching abilities. You can grow the skills, but you can't be great at everything, which there's always ones that are more important than others anyway. And I'm sure that when the game comes out, I'll be making videos about the ones that you should probably focus on in this specific area, because I will be making videos about dynasty mode considering that i just started making videos about cfm in madden i'm going to continue that in college football because that's you know to me that's the most fun mode to play anyway of course if you're a head coach you can uh fire coordinators and poach ones from other schools in the off season and stuff like that now college football playoffs will be in this game and it'll be the new format the 12 team format even though it's never been done i guess what the, the the inaugural season's coming up here now let's talk a little bit about recruiting because that's obviously one of the most important things also one of the most fun things similar to draft in the offseason in Madden uh, when you want to build your team. Now, it says the recruiting process is deeper than ever, and each class includes 4,000 prospects, which is insane. It says it includes athletes who are back in the game. I don't really know what that means, uh, but it makes it sound like, you know, they, they kind of do that um, in Madden where they kind of have, like, players in the in the draft that are based off of former players. Like, you'll have, like, a 6'8 receiver that's based off, of like, Harold Carmichael or something. And they've, they've started doing that, so I'm thinking that's what they're talking about. But it says you cannot create a prospect, uh, which is understandable because, obviously, people would just create, like, a 7-foot, 99-speed receiver or something like that, I guess. Uh, but that's something that you can't do here. It says coaches have a certain number of hours to commit each week to scouting and recruiting, similar to Madden once again. Like I said, a lot of this stuff is going to seem like copy and paste. And it says, and a team can sign up to 35 players. They can encourage players to transfer to bring the roster under 85 scholarships. So basically they can ask players to leave so they can uh, fit some new guys in, which essentially works like cutting them because they can't decline. So basically in Madden, you cut guys. In this one, it's going be a little bit nicer. It's like, hey, buddy, we're going to just ask you to step aside, which I guess is, you know, I guess I like that because it is college kids at the end of the day. It says some pipelines have narrowed to include cities like Atlanta. Some recruits have deal breakers, meaning there are simply certain things that five-star recruits want that smaller schools can't meet, which is understandable. Um, if you're in a smaller school, you're going to have to build a new team up from two-star, three-star, four-star players, I would imagine. Uh, basically, that's what they're saying. You once again will have the option to send the house in recruiting and throw a lot of hours at a certain kid. Uh, it says it's a stage-based process where you try to keep your school above the recruits cut line. Now, here's something I think some people will be excited about because I actually heard some negative feedback when I mentioned NIL deals. It says that NILs do not exist in Dynasty mode. Instead, it's something called brand exp exposure, which used to be called TV exposure, I guess. Uh, but brand exposure, obviously, because now it's all about Instagram and whatever your online presence is. So that's what brand exposure is instead of um, the older fashioned television. Uh, and it says and it serves as the NIL stand-in during the recruiting pitches. Now, the explanation from EA folks was that the NIL landscape changes seemingly every month. And they didn't want to commit to something only for it to change, which makes sense. Because I don't think the average person, like we all understand salary caps. Because we play Madden and we understand we get the the news when it comes to football. NIL is so different right now; it changes so much. Like they're saying, nobody really understands it. So it'd really be difficult to create an NIL uh, duplication of real life when it's something that the average person doesn't really understand anyway, and it's changing so much. So I totally get that, but I do understand the fact that they have something that's going to represent that. That's going to be important to certain athletes that are going to want to you know go to a program that's highly uh, you know publicized and gets a lot of press. Now they really get uh, kind of in depth here with some really cool information about the actual recruiting process. It says recruiting visits can be fashioned specifically to what a player wants. If player time is one of his biggest motivators, he can sit in a position room meeting, which is 
totally cool. I, I, I can't imagine what that looks like. It says inviting multiple quarterbacks to visit on the same weekend could hurt you because obviously they're going to be thinking, you know, well, I, I, their job's not safe. You want to if you if you want a specific guy, you want to want to give him that attention. And I like how they mentioned quarterback too because obviously that's not like receiver or like cornerback where there's multiple guys playing. There's only one guy playing, so that's that's really unique. It says there is a risk and reward to certain weekends. A win against a bad opponent won't help you as much, and a loss could hurt you in their standing. So uh, basically, if you have a big win against a big team, that might be the best time to bring out that new quarterback that you're really trying to get, uh, which really um, you know sounds cool. I like that. I like those little attentions to detail. Now, it goes in depth a little bit about the portal system, which is obviously something that's important too. Now, it says the actual transfer portal itself is going to look a lot like uh, the recruiting process. They'll have star ratings. It'll look like when you're basically trying to recruit them at high school. Uh, but it also says that if you try to recruit a guy out of high school and you don't get him, a few years later, if you're trying to get him in the portal, they might remember that. And it might actually help you to get them through the portal system, which I think is awesome. Like I said, I love the little attention to detail. That stuff's getting me more excited than anything. Now it says, service academies can take transfers the same as everyone else, even though it doesn't exactly work like that in real life. So, you know, I'm guessing when they say service academies, they're talking about like Army and Navy and stuff like that. I know a lot of people out there, I mean, I would love to like build Army or Navy into a dynasty in, in, in NCAA. I think that'd be really cool. It says at the end of each season, coaches will be faced with more players than ever who want to go to the NFL or transfer for reasons such as playing style or pro potential and given the chance to persuade them to stay. Now, I know that's something that, um, you know, they talked about because people are, you know, with the portal system removing that uh, requirement to go redshirt a year, I think that used to be a requirement in NCAA, with them removing that, guys are jumping all over the place. And I think that they said they didn't want it to be like that, but it still, you know, basically makes it look like it's going to be a little bit more than normal. You're going to be losing guys coming and going more than normal, which is something that's kind of a bummer when you're trying to build a team uh, because you can't make everybody happy. You know what I mean? That's going to be that's going to be difficult. It'll be interesting to see how they play on the dynamic of things like playing time because we already know that the wear and tear system from the gameplay video that I did. Uh, basically, you're going to have to, um, you know, run a lot of split back systems. You're going to have to get uh, a lot of guys uh, playing time just based off of the lack of, you know, the fatigue penalty that's going to be in the game so it'll be interesting to see how much you have to do to keep people happy to keep them to stay now next up talking about draft classes one of the biggest questions that people are asking and i thought was somewhat confirmed when you could buy the two games together i'm actually kind of pissed off about this uh, apparently you cannot export draft classes from college football 25 to uh, ea's madden 25 or whatever whatever that whatever the case may be there's not going to be the ability to export draft classes which is something that a lot of people are really excited about and they say it's based off the fact that the people the, the kids that are signing these um you know these the they're signing on to get into this game and they're getting their 600 bucks and a copy of the game that doesn't mean that they're signing on to the nfl pa that's completely different once you sign on the nfl pa then you're actually getting some real money so they can't uh legally do that so basically if you wanted to um you know to to buy uh, the game and then and, and then export from one game to the next. You're not going to be able to do that. It says you won't be able to export computer generated classes either. You can, however, export your Road to Glory player to Superstar mode in Madden because obviously it's a fake player, so there's no real issues as far as licensing or anything like that. Uh, but that's that's something I, I you know I have had a few comments about. So the the few people that are planning on doing that will be excited that they can do that. But you can't export draft classes, which I think is a total bummer because that was something that was always in the old games. And then last but not least, there's a little bit of information about Team Builder. It says it is in the game, but there wasn't a lot of information about it. You can design your own uniforms, helmets, and field, and upload a logo. Uh, it says more details still to come. Uh, but Dynasty Mode uh, was the part of the game that you know a lot of people were most interested about, so that's why I wanted to make a video about it. And I think we got a lot of really good information. Uh, I'm going to end the video there. Like I said, if you guys want more information about gameplay, I'll have that popping up on screen. Not a lot of new information that came out about gameplay yet, but there should be some tomorrow, so make sure to be a subscriber. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. Mush it out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.